Happy Father's Day, everyone. So, I'm working on my own vehicle. It's my Toyota Sienna van, all-wheel drive. And lately I've been noticing, I'd say over the last month, when I'm coming to a stop, the pedal feels a little soft. You know, just it started gradual, and it started to feel a little soft. And I started noticing it as I'm coming up to like a stop sign or a traffic light or something like that, if I let go of the brake and hit it again, you know, basically like pumped it once, the pedal would be right there. Okay. So, what is it? Air in the lines? No. It's not air in the lines. There's no leak anywhere. Air doesn't just appear in the lines. Air gets there if somebody opened up a brake line for something, you know, replace a caliper, replace a hose, something like that, and replace a wheel cylinder, and they didn't bleed the brakes correctly. That's how air appears. Very rarely will a master cylinder push air into a system. Very, very, very rarely. Usually a master cylinder will fail. Um, I think I've only ever seen that once where a master cylinder actually forced a little bit of air into, this, into the system. And it will only put air in the very top of the system. Air won't travel down and like go through the lines and stuff like that unless you have a leak somewhere and the fluid can come out at the other end. So you, it's like, picture if you had a straw and you filled it with liquid and you plugged one end. Now try to blow air through it while holding the other end. You can't do it. It doesn't work. It's impossible. So you're not going to inject air into the system. Like I said, a master cylinder, I've seen it do it, but it only puts like within the first quarter of an bug in my ear, first quarter of an inch of the line. And that's about it. So, you know, the air is like right there, basically at the master cylinder. And usually a, a quick bleed at the master cylinder will cure that problem. But obviously you need a master cylinder. Anyway. So, I am I notice it like, you know, hit the brakes, hit them again real quick. And the pedal's right there. So it's not air lines. What could it be? Well, I had a feeling, now because I moved from New York to down south, and it's an up north vehicle, I figured the caliper slides were probably seized. And sure enough... That's what I got. Let me show you. So here on the rear, I already got the caliper off. I just got it sitting right there. These caliper pins, they are locked in place. They're not super tight, but they're not moving. So what happens is you hit the brakes, the piston comes out. The caliper is supposed to slide this way. So remember, piston pushes on this pad, but the caliper slides this way, pushing on this pad. So what happens is, if the slot, if the if these pins are seized up, the caliper itself won't go this way. It's just a piston coming in. So eventually, you get more wear on the inner pad, and it's kind of hard to tell, but there's a slight, slight bit more wear on the inner pad. Plus, as the pads wear and the slide's not moving, now you have an air gap in between the pads and the caliper. So now you hitting the brakes. This, the piston of the caliper has to move further inward to apply the brake pressure. A lot of times in a situation like this where the pins are seized, you will see the outside of the rotor actually have a rust buildup on it. Fortunately, I don't have that. But on both sides, these pins are seized. Actually, this side's a little more exaggerated. You can see the inner pad is worn more. And like I said, these pins are, they wiggle a little bit, but they're locked in place. So these should come out relatively easy. I'm going to put a ratchet on these or a socket or something and see if I can't get them to move. Then once I get them to move, I'll clean out the uh, caliper bra bracket here and then I'm going to re-lube everything. Probably put the uh, pins on a wire wheel and re-lube everything and make sure that everything moves free. So let's get started with that and this way I can have normal brakes again on this vehicle. Now I already got this one to move so I'm going to pull it out. and. It actually has grease and everything else on it, so why was it seized up? It just gets a buildup of stuff, but now you can actually see, now that I've moved it, it's moving free. So, was it just hung up for whatever reason? I don't know. But what I'm going to do, always make sure the boots go back in place, and if the boots are torn, replace them. Especially if you're up north. If you're down south, yeah, it's not... It is important, but it's not as important. Um, but anyway, so, what I'm going to do is, let me see if I can... Yeah, I can get this one to start turning... Yeah, if you're up north, make sure you put if the boots are torn, put new ones on. Okay. See, now this one's a bit mungy. Like the, basically what happens is the grease 
starts to solidify and let's see oops hold on sorry yeah see the grease actually started to solidify on there whoops sorry 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 let's try to focus there we go so now it just gets all nasty in there so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take the boots off i don't know how they go in on this oh there they go so they actually go into a receiving groove inside there. You can see that right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean everything up. I'm going to go with like a little brush to the inside if I have one. Um, a lot of times if I don't have a brush that's the right size, I'll actually just load it with brake clean and use this and just ram it back and forth inside there and maybe go with a pick or a small screwdriver just to pick anything out that's in there. Um, so let me start doing that on this side. And I'll show you what I'm doing. All right, I got both sides apart. As you can see, I got the pins out. So now, basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put brake clean in here. Don't stand in front of it, because it shoots back at you. Stand in front of it, you're gonna wind up getting it in your eyes. So, see, I mean, I got it on my arm, but I'm so used to this stuff, it doesn't burn me anymore. So now, what I'm gonna do is I take a screwdriver, and just dig in there. I thought I might have had a wire brush, a small, like style, a tube style wire brush, but I don't. I just go in there and I try to scrape the walls to get out anything that might be stuck in there. Because like I said, the grease actually, it gets hard and it can actually, you know, sort of hydraulic the, the uh, pins and keep them from going moving smoothly. <laughs> And then finally what I'll do is I'll take a pin and I'll just make sure it's moving free, which they all are. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to blow the holes out with some compressed air and then I'm going to lube up the pins and I'm going to pre-lube the holes. So let's do that. Now this is the grease that I use. Um, this stuff works excellent. You buy it in a tub like this, and if you're lucky enough, you get one with a free brush. Woohoo! So here is your free brush, brush that you get. I think you can get a thousand of these for a dollar, but I'm not sure. Anyway, just take a good heaping amount of this stuff. And what I do is I basically try to pack it into the hole like that. Now what I'll do is I'll take the screwdriver And I'll push it into the hole like that. Try to get it in there. So now, after all that's in there, yucky. It is what it is. So now, what I'll do is I'll take one of the pins and I'll force it in there. And now what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to pack it with a lot more grease because I want this thing to have some tension going back and forth because it'll keep it from getting hung up on the metal because there is a little bit of play. See it up and down because it's not, it's just a little bit of a sloppy fit. So let me pack that with some more grease and then I'll show you when I'm done with that. So now that one's packed the way it should be. And when you know, you'll know it's packed good because right there, see how it like wants to draw back on its own? It's because I got enough grease in there that's actually creating a vacuum when I pull out on it. And trying to push it in, initially, what happens is it tries to hydraulic, you know, and act like a hydraulic piston going in. So sometimes it's a little hard to force in. And that's actually the reason for these flat spots on the pins is to allow the grease to come through and air to come through to help uh, make these things move correctly. So let me do all of these and then I'm gonna install those little boots. So now that I got them all packed with grease and you don't have to worry about cleaning them off just yet, but now I can put this in and pay attention because there is a side that goes inside. Some of them are identical one side to the other. This one actually rolls to the inside. So you basically have to manipulate it like so to get it inside sometimes you got to use a little screwdriver sometimes you got to twist it and roll it just to get it in place but once you get it close usually usually once you get it close you can take the pin and the pin will help guide it in place there it goes see now it actually just seated the inside of that boot so now 
now that I know it's packed well too, you see how it springs out? That's the hydraulic pressure from the fluid in there. So we push it in, we usually we'll hold it in. Now sometimes what'll happen too is the bellow here, well actually the rubber boot will fill up with air. So basically you just pull it out a little bit and it'll unseat from the outer portion and it'll blow the air out. So let me do that one and then we should be all ready to go back together. All right, so now that that's all together, now I can put the calibers back on. Now, one thing you want to check too is make sure the pads move freely and easily like that, because if they're stuck in the caliper bridge, caliper bracket, if they're frozen in there, that'll cause the same thing. And because believe it or not, what'll happen is they'll lock up on the top and the bottom. And as the caliper's pressing in, it'll actually bow the pad like this. And the pad will actually act like a spring and push back. So it'll actually compress the caliper and that'll give you a mushy pedal also. Like I said, the pedal really wasn't mushy, but I just noticed if I hit it twice, I'd have a better pedal. So I knew there was something going on and I was confident, you know, there's not gonna be air in the system because the lines were never opened. So let me put the calipers back on and we'll go from there. So that's all together and tight now. Now one other thing, back probably, I forgot what year, they changed the body style of the Pontiac Grand Prix to the last body style they had. But we had a relatively new one come in when I worked at the dealer and a customer was complaining of a mushy pedal and they hit it twice and it would be fine. So I got in it, same thing, I thought the slides were stuck or something. I mean, it was a relatively new car at the time and um, couldn't figure it out. Like, what the heck is going on with this thing? So I had somebody sitting in it and I had them hitting the braces. We tried bleeding the brakes, everything. And it turned out the right rear caliper the piston, I don't know what was wrong with it and why it did it. It had to have something to do with the seal. Like maybe the seal on the piston was folded or the boot for the piston. Who knows? I don't know. I was out of smudge on my nose. Anyway, so what was happening was the piston was going out to compress the pad. You know, it was coming out this way, compressing the pad. And when you let go of the brakes, it was actually getting sucked back in. So now you had a pretty good gap between the rotor and the pad. So now you hit the brakes once and then you had to hit it again, like to pump it and push it out. I never saw that before that and I've never seen it since, but it was just a weird scenario that did happen. So let me get the wheels on this and then I'm gonna road test this. I just finished the timing belt and whatnot on it. So now it's due for a road test. All right, so I just took it for a road test. Everything feels good. I mean, the pedal feels much better than it did before. So, like I said, if you got if you got a spongy pedal and you really have no reason for it, like you didn't open up the lines or anything, take a look at that. Take a look at the caliper pin slides. Um, the pad slide, too. Just, you know, in case a pad's hung up in a caliper bridge, caliper bracket. Uh, just check them out, because that could be your problem. Um, nine times out of ten, I find that that is the problem. So, anyway, hope you're getting something out of my videos. If you could, hit that like button. If you could, please subscribe. Have a great day. Keep wrenching.